Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So as you'd have guessed from the thumbnail and the title of the video, in this video, I'll be sharing my MathWorks on-campus interview experience along with the entire details regarding the interview process for MathWorks, uh, right from the online assessment, what were the different sections for uh, online assessment, what all questions were asked in the technical and HR interviews. So stay tuned till the end of the video to know more about it. You can also take a look at my Qualcomm's interview experience for the software engineer role after the end of this video. You will find the link in the description section. So MathWorks came to our campus for hiring for the role of engineering development group. So firstly, they had some resume shortlisting and after that, they shortlisted 141 students for the next round, which was online assessment round. So now coming to the online assessment round. This round was conducted on the HackerRank platform and the total time duration for the test was 90 minutes and the test was divided into six sections covering various aspects. So the first section was focused on mathematics and aptitude and it was pretty easy and doable. And the questions from mathematics were based on topics such as probability, permutations, combinations and aptitude topics such as divisibility test, time distance speed and those classic train related problems. Then the second section was focused on testing computer science fundamental knowledge. So the questions were based on topics such as data structures, algorithms, uh, operating systems and database management systems. So the third section was completely focused on C and C++. Here the questions were focused on output and syntax based and they required you to do the program tracing. Also, there was a good emphasis that was given on object oriented programming concepts such as constructors, destructors, op copy constructor, overloading, overriding, as well as access specifiers, inheritance and friend function. Also, there were some questions based on STL library in C++ and also based on pointers and structures. So the next section was focused on JavaScript. Here, the questions were again output and syntax based and needed you to trace the programs. Also, there was good focus that was given on questions based on the behavior of numbers plus strings. So number plus string. How does JavaScript handle that? So number plus number, number plus string, string plus number and string plus string. Also, the questions were based on DOM manipulation in JavaScript. So the next section was related to coding challenges. Here two coding problems were given and the instructions at the start of the exam clearly mentioned that it was expected to solve these two coding problems in different programming languages. So I solved the first problem in Java and did the second one in C++. So now coming to the last and the final section. This section was completely focused on Python and this was an optional as well as a bonus section. But I will highly recommend you to solve and attempt this section as it will increase your chances of getting shortlisted for the next round. So here the questions were based on Python topics like lists, tuples, maps, iterables, as well as some basic understanding on Python syntax. The overall test was quite easy and manageable and a total of 141 students gave this test and out of them 18 were shortlisted for the next round and 15 were waitlisted. So coming to the next round, which was a group discussion round. This GD round was conducted in a virtual meeting room where each room had around five to six participants. Also, since the company had conducted a PPT about the EDG program at MathWorks just before this GD round, the moderator in the room asked us to explain about our understanding about the EDG program. And it went pretty well. Each participant was given two chances to speak on it. And out of five participants, I along with other two participants proceeded to the next round. So one important tip here is that do listen to the PPT very carefully where they are explaining about the EDG program at MathWorks. Uh, you can also go through the details of this program, which is present on their website as well. Uh, this is critically important because I was also asked about my understanding on EDG program during my HR interview as well. After this, I proceeded to the next round, which was the technical interview round. So talking about the next round, which was technical interview round. Here, the interviewer seemed to be quite young and he went through my resume and asked me to explain one of the project in detail along with tools and technologies I used to develop it. Then he asked me to choose two programming languages of my choice to which I said Java and C++ 
and then he started asking the questions based out of java so firstly the interviewer asked me what is garbage collection and how is it handled in java then he asked can we explicitly perform the garbage collection i was not able to recollect the answer to this question and uh, he provided the hint to this question that you can use system.gc method after that he asked a follow up question that does calling system.gc method always clean up the memory next the interviewer asked me what is finalize method and finally block in java and to highlight their differences and summarize their usages next he asked about exception handling so the first question was what will happen if the code has multiple catch statements and to explain about user defined exceptions so i explained him with the help of a proper example next he asked me about what is an object class in java uh, then he asked let's say we want to create an object of a class which has only one constructor and that constructor itself is private and let's say we want to have only one instance of that class to be used throughout the application so how to achieve that so if you look at the keywords properly from the statement you can understand that this is very similar to what singleton design pattern does so you can see the code on the screen as well for the singleton design pattern then the interviewer asked me some questions on method overloading and overriding so one of the question was can static methods be overridden the answer is of course no because static methods are binded at compile time whereas method overriding is a concept of runtime or dynamic binding then the interviewer shifted his focus towards multi threading in java firstly he asked what are the different ways you can create a thread you can do it by either extending the thread class or implementing the runnable interface then he asked how to ensure that only one thread accesses a particular function at a time the obvious answer is that you can use locks but more elegant ways to do it by using synchronized methods then he asked me to explain the difference between synchronized method and synchronized block next he asked me how to ensure that one thread waits for another thread to finish its execution so the answer is with the help of join method next he asked me this question which you could see on the screen as well based on access specifiers so you can comment down the answer to this question in the comment section then he asked me about the differences between hash map and hash table next he asked me to implement multiple inheritance with the help of an example so i told him that we can use the interfaces for this and also told him about the famous diamond problem in java then the interviewer asked me about the differences between abstract classes and interfaces next he told me that let's assume there is a vehicle class which contains a drive method and that is being inherited by two sub classes the bike class and the car class and the instantiation of vehicle class is not allowed and we can only allow objects of bike class and car class to be created so he asked me how to create such a setup the answer is quite simple you can make the vehicle class as abstract and uh, we can also make the drive method abstract which will enforce the vehicle class to become abstract this way we can achieve the entire setup and he was quite satisfied with my explanation after this he moved to the questions based on c++ firstly he asked me what are friend function and abstract classes in c++ next he asked how to write a pure virtual function in c++ then whether a virtual function can be a friend of any other class then he asked about some questions based on constructors destructors copy constructor constructor overloading so one of the question was how to create a deep copy of an object in c++ and to explain the difference between shallow copy and deep copy also he asked about uh, can a constructor be static as well as private in c++ then he asked me to explain the differences between structs and classes then he asked me about what is a volatile keyword and the usage of volatile keyword i feel this question has become quite common nowadays in most of the interviews uh, next he asked me about what is encapsulation after this he asked can a static method be overloaded in c++ then he presented me with this code snippet which you could see on the screen as well and asked me to predict the output so you guys can comment the answer to this question in the comment section then the interviewer asked me about how to implement multiple inheritance in c++ so i again explained him about the famous diamond problem and told him that we can resolve the ambiguity with the help of scope resolution operator 
Next, he asked me what is null PTR in C++ and to specify a specific use case where making a pointer as null pointer is useful. So after this question, my technical interview was over and this round lasted for like one hour, 15 minutes. And overall, this round went pretty well for me. I could answer most of the questions easily and uh, some of them I answered with the help of the hints that the interviewer provided. So I was quite confident that I'll be called for the further round. So eventually after a few minutes, they told me that I am shortlisted for the last round, which was managerial plus HR round. So now coming to the last round, which was managerial plus HR round. This round went for like 50 to 55 minutes. And this was one of the longest HR interview round that I've ever given. The interviewer was very much interested in my overall profile since my previous round went pretty well and the interviewer had given a good feedback to the HR. So the interviewer first introduced himself and then asked me to introduce myself. I tried to keep my introduction short and not exceeding too much, like not specifically more than 50 seconds. Then the interviewer went through my resume and asked me to explain two of the projects that I had mentioned on the resume. So I tried to keep it brief and focused on explaining the need of the project, the problem it tries to solve, what were the various challenges I faced and how did I overcome those challenges. Overall, he was satisfied with my answer. Also, since I had mentioned about one year of experience working at Oracle Financial Services, he asked me about what challenges I faced while working on those projects and how did I handle them. He also asked about the Texel Manager POR that I had mentioned and asked some questions around it. Then he asked whether I was aware about the role I was interviewed for, to which I replied affirmatively and explained about my understanding for the role, uh, since I had listened to the PPT very carefully. Then he moved on and started asking the typical HR questions. Firstly, he asked, let's say you have multiple things having nearby deadline, then how will you handle them? Next, he asked me to tell about an incident where I had disagreements with the team members and how did I handle it? Then he asked me to tell about an incident where I showcased leadership skills and uh, led the team to drive towards success. Next, he asked about how do I handle and deal with tough situations? How do I manage time when multiple tasks are lined up? Then he asked me about how do you handle stressful situations and pressure? How do you deal with failures and what steps you take to overcome them? Why do you want to work at MathWorks? And many more such typical HR questions. Clearly, the interviewer wanted to see the leadership skills, communication skills, accepting challenges, keeping calm, having a positive mindset, accepting mistakes and working on them and ensuring that it does not repeat again. So which are quite essential to grow in the software industry. So finally, the interviewer was happy with my answers and f because of that, he provided me an on-spot offer. Uh, but I declined that offer because I, uh, Qualcomm had also provided me an offer for software engineer role. But I feel that it was a wonderful and a fun experience giving such long and involved interviews. So if you found this video useful, then do like and comment on this video and do subscribe to my channel. That helps me to stay motivated to make more such videos. Also, you can take a look at my Qualcomm's interview experience. You will find the link in the description section. You can also follow me on different social media handles, LinkedIn and Instagram. Their links will also be in the description section. With that, I wish you all the best for your placement preparation and we'll meet in some another video.